Kia good evening. Progress is being made in Southland's education system, but the region is not yet meeting all education targets. That's according to data released today by Education Minister Hekia Parata, which shows Southland primary schools are not yet meeting the 85% target for reading, writing and maths, although the region is sitting above the national level in all three areas. In secondary and tertiary education, Southland sits below the national average. The target is for 85% of all 18-year-olds to have NCEA Level 2 or equivalent by 2017. In Southland last year, 85% had NCA Level 1, 71% had Level 2 and 44% had UE Standard. Invercargill could soon have red light cameras installed at some intersections to curb the high proportion of red light runners in the city. Between 2008 and 2012 there were 11 fatalities, 169 serious injuries and more than 1,400 minor injury crashes where the running of a red light was a contributing factor. The annual social cost of crashes caused by running red lights is an estimated $43 million. Road Safety South and Community Advisor Jane Ballantyne says red light cameras are expected to be a powerful addition to the road safety toolkit. Uh, saving of money, saving in lives, um, also um, a reduction, of, which leads to a reduction of crashes of course. 59% of our crashes that happen in, uh, in Vicargill um, happen, at, happen at intersections. Um, I'm not sure what amount, you know, the percentage of that that happen at um, actually at traffic lights, but I know there's a lot. Do you know how many people actually run red lights in, in Vicargill? Yeah, well the last time it was looked at was 5,000 a day. Now that, I, you know, I have to repeat that, that's 5,000 a day in Vicargill City. And that's people running the red light, not running orange to red. They're actually crossing the line on the red light and running through the intersection. Why do we have such a problem with that down here? I think it's the sparseness of traffic. I think it's the fact that we, um, you know, nine times out of ten you're not going to crash if you, you have that, that type of behaviour. You would never do that in Auckland or Christchurch or anywhere else because of the amount of traffic. Um, but in Invercargill City most of the time you go through an intersection, especially at lights, and there's no one else coming the other way, so you just take that risk. As far as being notorious for crash rates at intersections in New Zealand, where do we rate currently? We're about, oh, Invercargill City is about number three, um, which has been an um, improvement from number one. Um, last year we've actually dropped a wee bit, which is really great. I'm not sure whether that's due to um, crashes at red lights, but, but we have actually made a good reduction over that last 12 months. Are there any measures, other measures that you think might be necessary to reduce red light runners? People just are buying simple rules, I think, really, because I think our intersections are pretty straightforward. Here we have lovely wide open roads, um, easy to, easy rules to follow and things like that. So it's just people's behaviour. I mean, if people actually followed um, the, the simple rules, um, simple intersection rules, you know, we would have a great reduction. It's unclear as the stage as to how many we'll actually have in the city. Um, what would be an ideal outcome? I would like to see it every every red light because I know, I mean I've seen it many times and over the years we've actually done a lot of studies on intersections and, and traffic behaviour and things like that. People actually put their, their, their feet down, put their put their foot down at intersections in Invercargill. And so um, I would like to see them at every intersection. I'm sure it would um, hold people back. And I know there was a survey done about two years ago and people themselves or, or the public themselves actually said that they would like to see it too. An unidentified white powder caused a police call-out to an Eastern Gore property last night. Police were called after a 50-year-old man reported opening a sealed soda and finding white powder inside. He found the can 10 days ago and after prising it open, sniffed the white powder inside, getting the substance on his tongue which became numb. Emergency services secured the tin and decontaminated the area. The man was taken to Gore Hospital by ambulance as a precautionary measure and was later discharged. The can has been sent away for analysis. The Southern District Health Board area has the highest rate of dangerous alcohol consumption according to a report released today. A quarter of drinkers within Southern District Health Board's population consume alcohol in a hazardous manner according to a new report into alcohol consumption and its effects. The impact of alcohol on the health of Southern Communities report shows a quarter of people in this region drink hazardously, which can lead to cause accidents and injury, high crime rates and drink driving. To combat the problem, Project Ease Up has been launched by Public Health South and the Southern Primary Health Organisation. Project Ease Up involves um, ED staff uh, presenting an alcohol related question as part of their screening procedures in ED. So they'll ask a question around have you consumed four or more or six or more for women and men 
servings of alcohol on any one occasion in the last day, week or month or never. And so if people indicate that they're doing that on a more than a monthly basis, it indicates a hazardous drinking pattern. From there, ED will um, talk to that person about their hazardous drinking and give them a brochure which was developed by ALAC around hazardous drinking. But of course, because of the nature of ED, they don't have time to spend um, doing a full intervention around alcohol with someone. So from there, the process will be that the person is referred to primary care, so that's to their GP or practice nurse. Now what we intend to do in primary care is to um, offer a training program to primary care around a model called ABC, which means ask, provide brief advice and counselling, which is a really short intervention around talking to people about their alcohol intake. And evidence has shown that a really short intervention like that has just as much effect on a person as a longer term counselling intervention. So once you've identified that they could be a hazardous drinker, is there any evidence that once you go, they go through this process that it's going to reduce drinking rates? It's important to remember that this is a population health approach. So it's not designed to um, have an intense um, behaviour change on an individual. It's designed to be presented to a lot of people over a period of time and through that we hope to see a reduction in hazardous drinking. We do know, the evidence is though, that advice from a GP or a practice nurse is looked upon as something really important by people. GPs and practice nurses have a lot of influence and in providing health advice in a way that we know is appropriate and meaningful can have a really big impact on people's lives. Stay with us after the break, why first home buyers may soon find it more difficult to buy a house. Welcome back. First home buyers could be left out of the housing market as early as August if the Reserve Bank introduces restrictions on bank lending. The Reserve Bank could force lenders to limit borrowings as early as next month, making it harder to take out a mortgage with a small deposit, according to the Labour Party. Introducing lending limitations would affect those seeking new mortgages with low deposits and high-risk property investors potentially halving high, low-to-value lending. Ross Smith of SBS Bank says the proposal is understandable given Auckland's housing bubble, but would have unintended consequences by making it more difficult, particularly for first-home buyers, to get into the market. Almost 25,000 women and children sought help from Women's Refuge in 2011. July is Women's Refuge Month with the theme, Give Her a Voice and Help Her Be Heard. Sarah Bedford spoke to Invercargill's Women's Refuge Coordinator, Cathy Robertson, who says the number of people seeking help is continuing to rise. At the moment, um, we're really um, struggling with the amount of people that are still using synthetic cannabis, um, alcohol and there's a lot of financial pressures out there as well. Are you seeing a growing number in, in terms of the number of people coming and, and seeking help overall? Yes, our numbers are always growing and we're always getting more phone calls of people asking what they can do to help friends and family members. Um, you know, it's hard you know, for family and that watching their you know, loved ones in really dangerous situations. Why do you think those numbers are growing? I just think more people are asking for help. You know, they, they are realising that they don't have to live like that and that they can, you know, try and get out. Now for the shelter, what impact does that have for you? Um, it's keeping us really quite busy. Um, we're usually we're about half full. Um, most of this year we've been about half full. Is that impacting on staff? Yes, it's keeping us... Um, flat stick all the time <laughs> but that's okay you know um, we're, we're managing with it and that's fine. Now do you think Southland's in a different position from the rest of the country? No it's the same throughout New Zealand um, that's quite obvious just when we're talking with different refuges and that they're all really busy and we're all in, you know dealing with the same sort of stuff. Is there a key message out there for people? Really just you know if you if you are living where there's domestic violence going on you know please reach out, you know, if you're in really a dangerous situation, ring the police straight away um, or else, you know, follow up and ring us. It's a plant many people may never have heard of, but for the past nine months, Southland's been home to a trial of the feed crop fodder beet. The beet from the beetroot and silver beet family has been trialled at a farm near Winton as part of a four-location South Island trial by DLF Seeds. The company today presented results to farmers and industry representatives saying it provides high-quality feed for sheep, dairy or beef cows. 
13 varieties of fodder beet were used in the trial and another trial will be undertaken next season. DLFC's Denmark product manager Gorli Glitka is speaking at results seminars and says the trials are going well. I think they're looking quite good. It's a crop who's producing very well. It's a lot of uh, tons of dry matter per hectare. So it's one of the, the main uh, things about the, the fodder beet is that they're producing so well. High yielding, sure. Uh, it's a secure uh, source of energy for the cow. So why are farmers being encouraged to introduce this crop into their rotation? I think it's because uh, it goes along with brassica without uh, um, increasing the, the diseases on the brassica. And actually it's, uh, it's, it, it is because it is so high yielding. You can't find another crop who's, who's yielding that uh, low amount of uh, dry matter per hectare. Now, is this growing in popularity? Yeah, it is. It's become in uh, the last uh, four or five years and it's still increasing in, in the amount of uh, hectares. So, so it's, it's a new and uh, ongoing process. In, why do you think it's doing well in Southland? I think it's because of the weather. It's uh, like it's, it grows quite well on these conditions compared to other crops. So that's, that's why I think it's so, so popular here. Southland-based companies will be recognised and encouraged to do better with the inaugural Southland Business Excellence Awards being held this year. The awards were officially launched last night with an information evening for those interested in entering. Southland Chamber of Commerce Chief Executive Richard Hayes says the idea is to showcase and recognise the region's business and capability. The awards have eight categories and will be held in October. Close to 50 companies were represented at last night's launch and Mr Hayes says there's been strong interest. The awards will be held every second year, alternating with the Southland Export Awards. And that's it from news tonight. Coming up in sport, we wrap up the Highlanders Super 15 season. From the news team, good night.